hello everybody four star here and we're back with an interesting video here uh wanted to start my project which is the bfl which uh, a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago that i um put up on the community posts about what i've been modding and making uh these past couple months and i wanted to make an introduction video because this is season six and I only have seasons five and four recorded. So I would like to have a brief history of the league. And this is what this video is gonna be about. So like and subscribe and uh, let's start this journey. So to start it off, we will be just reading the summaries that I put on my spreadsheet. I will have a link, link in the description below for the season six spreadsheet, which will have the BFL history tab, the newly made BFL history tab on there. And we're just going to start with, of course, season one, the All-Star Football League. So my very first season was launched on NCAA Football 2002 on the PS2. The All-Star Football League, or the ASFL, was created by me, Four Star, in 2012 after my grandmother's death. The trophy was named after her, the Andrews Trophy. And based on where my family lived, that's where I put all the teams. So the first four teams were the Miami Cyclones, the Ohio Bulldogs, the New Jersey Generals, that I got the name from, of course, the Generals from the USFL back in the 80s, because this was before the 2020 season, and the Carolina Kings. And Rex Johnson, who, uh, who is still playing uh, to this day, this is his ninth season in the league, and they went 6-0, the Cyclones, the Miami Cyclones went 6-0, and they ended up winning the championship in the inaugural championship game. Um, he won MVP, he had 14 touchdowns, uh, just over 1,000 yards, and only four INTs. It was a six game season, and uh, it started out uh, for the first of the four seasons of the ASFL. So the second season continued on NCAA Football 2002. This time the uh, the Ohio Bulldogs beat the Miami Cyclones in the regular season, uh, and they ended their record of um, the season at seven regular season wins. That is still the record to this day, and you'll see that it was tied uh, a couple times throughout the BFL. Um, but the Carolina Kings actually beat them as well, who added QB Andy Hewitt. Andy Hewitt still plays in the league. This is his 10th season in the league, and he plays for the Carolina, not the Carolina Kings, but the Kansas City Scouts. He is the Kansas City Scouts quarterback. Even with the losses, Miami rebounded with the wins and put them in the first seed uh, to host the championship game once again. Uh, their legendary wide receiver, Mookie Williams, caught two touchdowns to get uh, Miami the second straight championship. Uh, even, even after that, Otto Anderson, who is the quarterback of the Ohio Bulldogs and is uh, still playing in the league, uh, this is his 10th season, and he is the backup for the Ohio Bulldogs now. Uh, this is his retirement season, so he decided to stay with the team uh, th that drafted him. He had the MVP season this uh, this time around. He had 16 touchdowns, four INTs, just over 1,300 yards, and 58% completion percentage which is pretty good. It gets better throughout the seasons. Okay, so this time around, season three debuted on NCAA 08, which was on my PS2 back in like 2013, 2014. Uh, we added expansion teams, the Atlanta Wildcats and the Boston Revolution, expanded to a 10 game regular season, which means that every team played each other twice. Uh, Otto Anderson and Andy Hewitt take each other on on the third ASFL championship game. The Ohio Bulldogs finally won their first ever championship against the Carolina Kings. Uh, Otto Anderson won the MVP. This time around, he had 23 touchdowns because of the 10 game season, seven INTs, and just over 2,000 yards. He had 60% completion percentage, and he got his revenge on, oh, actually, they, they beat the New Jersey Generals, Carolina, uh, beat the Cyclones and they got to play each other in the championship game. Also, this was the first time that we had a playoff because there was six teams, so we had a 14 playoff. And finally, the fourth and final season of the ASFL uh, was in Madden 08, once again, 
on the PS2 around 2014-2015. Uh, future Hall of Famer Mookie Williams got traded from Miami to New Jersey. This was the first ever trade I ever did uh, on the tournament mode in Madden. And the Generals got the boost that they needed to advance to the championship against his former team, the Cyclones. Jersey wins their first championship win in franchise history. Quarterback Jason Janis, who won MVP that year. I don't know why I gave him this story, but he had cancer and he retired and then he beat it. And now his name is in the ring of honor of the New Jersey Dragons. So I don't know why I did that, but it was a storyline that I came up with. I don't know. Uh, but Rex Johnson got his second MVP. He had 2,000. 235 yards, 26 touchdowns, 6 INTs, and with a 58% completion rate. And in the semifinals, uh, Miami uh, beat Ohio. So Ohio never got their revenge, even in the playoffs. Um, and then New Jersey destroyed Carolina, and they won their first championship. I also, uh, so I, so I ended, I ended the league because I had different interests at the time. I was turning what's uh 15 16 so uh, at that time i had way different uh interests uh, i was drawing a lot more i was playing call of duty a lot more that took a lot of my time one of my younger years but i came back to it back in 2019 with the bfl so i might go a little bit more in depth with the bfl this time because the bfl um i'm a little older um, I'm about what 20 at this point 21 at this point with the BFL and I have a little bit more knowledge of the game uh, so I put in more stats um, more storylines and uh, just more effort into this league than I did in the previous one so I'm gonna voice my opinions about each season uh, from this here on uh, because season one was uh, pretty big but not the biggest season two was basically the biggest but but season one was pretty dope. I basically uh, kind of reshuffled the league. And instead of starting out with four teams, like I did with ASFL season one, I started out with six. So uh, with the six teams was the New Jersey Dragons. We were banded them from the Generals to the Dragons to make them more unique. We had the Dallas Marshals, which was a unique team. We had the Carolina Kings coming back. We had the Miami Cyclones coming back. Uh, we had a team that I made a long time ago when I was a very young child. When I made the, when I came up with the name to BFL, the best football league, because I, I mean, I was a child. I was like six years old when I made this league, uh, when I made the name for the league. But the New York Jays, they came back uh, from uh, that past, and they came back. I like the name. And then you got the Los Angeles Gold. So uh, in this league. Uh, the Dragons went undefeated home and they had a one and four record away, but they got enough. They did enough to um, warrant a first seed in the playoffs. But in this playoffs, uh, it was looking like the Dallas Marshals and the New Jersey Dragons should come uh, head to head in the championship game. I mean, they had Pat Kane. The Dallas Marshals did. They had Pat Kane and he had a outstanding season he had about 18 touchdowns um he did not win mvp richard murphy won mvp that year he had only 12 touchdowns four int he had less irts um 1688 yards um but in this one it was a lot of spoilers the semi-finals um the dragons lost to the cyclones who went five and five that year and they did not have rex johnson uh, on the team um but they didn't have Rex Johnson on the team, and they ended up winning that game 27-23. It was a big shocker. Um, the Dallas Marshals uh, lost completely to the Carolina Kings in their defense. and uh, The Carolina Kings had a very underrated defense that year. Um, they went 6-4 and four, uh, as well as uh, the other two teams up there. And when they uh, played a Mega Bowl 1, it was basically a route. Um, the Carolina Kings proved to themselves that Proof to the whole league that they were just that team to beat. And uh, they ended up winning that championship game. Rob Griffith, the legend of Rob Griffith came up to be. Um, he was a MVP uh, a runner as well, but not as much as Rashard and Pat Kane was. But he won the MVP of the Mega Bowl, having two touchdowns, 173 yards, just doing game manager stuff. But 
Uh, he was definitely the reason why they won. Uh, but they won their first championship uh, uh, in ASFL and in BSL history. That was their first championship game, uh, championship win. And uh, they ended up winning the championship against the Cyclones. So it was a big win for them. And they had to prove themselves in season two. So season two, man, it was the biggest season uh, in BFL history. Um, there were three expansion teams. The Ohio Bulldogs returned uh, just as the Bulldogs, uh, right to form. And Atlanta returned, but they were rebranded as the Atlanta Outlaws. Uh, the South Beach Knight Riders were the brand new expansion team. They were the third and final expansion team uh, to be added based off of the uh, 80s nightlife of Miami. That's why they have very bright colors. But Rob Griffith Kings, what a season they had, man. They had 12 wins and Griffith had 40 touchdowns, which was a record at the time uh, for total touchdowns. And he held the record uh, for most passing touchdowns at 38. Uh, he had a, uh, he has a still standing record of 4,492 passing yards, still not surpassed to this day, uh, primarily due to the fact that we didn't have a, a 16 game season like this one. We still don't. We probably won't ever have one because I'm not um, trying to do that, but <laughs> that was a long season. Um, the Dragons, though, they went 11 and 5. Uh, Rashard Murphy, he won Offensive Player of the Year, and he had a record seven rushing touchdowns as a QB. Um, the, the Dragons had a record and still standing record of 42.3 points per game. Unbelievable. They were scoring like crazy. Um, and Rex Johnson had returned from his short retirement as the Miami QB, but they had a very, very depleted roster. Uh, this was the year that they drafted BB Cash, which we will talk about a lot more uh, once the years go by. But uh, Rashard Murphy and the New Jersey Dragons uh, went on to take on the Carolina Kings in the Mega Bowl, in Mega Bowl 2. And they got to play in a legendary game that started out strong for both teams. But New Jersey's firepower was just too much for them. And Rashard Murphy had a legendary game. Five total touchdowns, 358 yards in total. And uh, he had 16 of 25 completion. He had three passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns to win that game, 42-27. And the Dragons ended up winning uh, one, probably one of the best uh, seasons of all time, in my opinion. Uh, the MVP was uh, obviously Rob Griffith. He had 40 touchdowns and uh, over 4,000 yards, almost 4,500 yards. He had a 66% completion percentage, which is still a BFL record in a season and 12 touchdowns. But um, Rashard Murphy's was not too much to laugh at either. He had a 60% completion uh, percentage. He almost had 4,000 yards himself, 3,000 948 yards 30 passing touchdowns uh he had seven rushing touchdowns which made that 37 in total 16 ints um and just an amazing season uh from uh, those two but the dragons ended up winning that championship game it was a long long season um it was an amazing season at that and uh it definitely made me feel like I should keep doing this. This was probably one of the most fun seasons I ever had. And uh, season two was still on the PS2. Uh, I, I believe I just moved into a new place. So it was it was amazing. It was a great season and it, it just kept me going. So in this third season, the BFL continued its expansion with a 11 game season this time because every team played each other once this time. It added three more teams. Boston returned to the BFL as the Huskies, while two other teams were expanded westward. We didn't just have LA, we had Oakland, the Oakland Grizzlies, and the Denver Dynamo. The Sean McPherson, he had seven straight wins with the Ohio Bulldogs and he had an MVP season, but until one of the biggest collapses in BFL history to this day, they lost four straight times and, and it all started in Oakland, they lost to the Grizzlies, and they ended up winning four straight themselves, going to the playoffs at 7-4 and, and being the fourth seed. 
And when they were the four seed, they upset the Carolina Kings, who had a great eight and three record. They were basically under the radar because everybody was talking about Ohio and Dallas. Those were the two hot teams. They upset uh, uh, the Carolina Kings. Dallas finally beat the New Jersey Dragons last season. They lost to them in the playoffs. And we had a mega bowl of the ages. Uh, the Marshalls looked like they were the season team. They looked like they were the more experienced team. They were up 14-3 by halftime. And then Oakland just made a rally. Um, Jed Cornell, the running back who won the MVP that game, he came back. He got two rushing touchdowns. And then Luke McCoy got a passing touchdown to Leland Jackson. And that sealed the deal. 27-21. Uh, what a game and Oakland became the first expansion team in his existence in his first year of existence to win the Mega Bowl so they had a lot uh, to live up to and a lot of people was calling them frauds in season four and they had to live up to that so season four was dubbed one of the most competitive seasons in BFL history due to one of the best QB draft classes in the league history with the additions to Lance Shutt of the Demons and Anthony Bales of the Revolution and due to his high level play. Miami's return to Domins was explosive as Rex Johnson had a record 39 passing touchdowns. It was a record until season five where he broke it and made 40. And they had an 11 and one record. It's still the best record in the BFL era. The only thing that comes close is the six and zero record that they had in ASFL season one. Playoffs were doubled from four teams to eight teams for a more competitive season. And because we had, I believe 14 teams at the time, or uh, 13. We had 13 teams at the time with a 12 game season. Uh, like I said before, the expansion team, the Detroit Demons were uh, the only expansion team. And the New Jersey Dragons who were in the playoffs every season till then went to three and nine. They had a really, really bad defense, but they came back after season four. Uh, Los Angeles, they added uh, Atlanta QB Nate Whitman. He was the QB for the Atlanta Outlaws until he got shipped off to Denver in season three. And then he went to LA and they had an amazing season. And one of the most surprising seasons uh, at that, they went eight and four and they beat the Dynamo in the playoffs to have their first ever postseason win and postseason appearance. So that was pretty good for them. Heartwarming win there. Um, Oakland, they wanted to prove the flute doubt was wrong and they, they did that. Nine and three. They went. They had a nine and three season. It was a pretty great season. They had a rivalry with Carolina. There uh, in the final week of the season, Carolina beat them so they can get the second place spot. And then two weeks later, after beating um, the Detroit Demons in the playoffs, Oakland got to play Carolina again. But this time, Carolina still had the better of them. They beat them 35 to 32, and they went on to take on the Cyclones in the championship game. And the Cyclones, man, what a roster they had. They had Rex Johnson. They had um, BB Cash, which, again, he had the receiving title for two seasons in a row. Um, they had some great guys in the back uh, for the defense. They had Austin Pleasant. They had TJ Siegel. Uh, guys that are still playing this season, trying to make a, a three-peat for season six. And just one hell of a season. They had a classic bout, Miami and Carolina in Mega Bowl Four. It was hosted by Miami, obviously. Uh, and they won that game 44-42. And I actually had that game recorded. It was one of my first recorded games that I actually recorded uh, back in 2020, I believe. And uh, it was a classic. Um, I, I have it on my YouTube. I will put it in the description or on the post here in the top right corner. Um, it was a hell of a drive, a game-winning drive, but from Rex Johnson, gave way to a game-winning field goal to win Mega Bowl 5. That game ended 44-42, probably one of the best Mega Bowls that uh, I've ever uh, been a part of. It was a historical season um, in Miami. They won their first of the back-to-back -back championships, and we'll continue that into season five. So onward to the most recent season, season five, BFL expanded more teams uh, with the Kansas City Scouts and the Toronto Golden Owls. The Toronto Golden Owls were the first BFL team based outside the U.S. So that was a pretty cool thing there. The Dragons had a great return to form as they went from worst to first. Ended up going 3-9 last year to 10-4 this year. Um, Boston 
just exploded out of nowhere. Last season, they went four and eight. But then Corey Smith, the second year running back, had one of the greatest seasons in BFL history uh, by a running back. He had 1,600 yards, which is a record. I believe it was 1,636. And 25 rushing touchdowns with 28 in total. I mean, that's LT numbers right there. That was basically just very, very insane. He led them all the way up to Mega Bowl 5 here. But let's talk about the other teams right now. Miami, they were projected to go undefeated. I mean, they were projected to go 13-1 and or 12-2 and or even 14-0. and I mean, this Miami squad just looked too dominant. But they slipped and lost some games, including a 44 to 14. Oh, I'm sorry, the 41 to 14 uh, loss to the Denver Dynamo, who barely uh, did not make it into the playoffs. I believe they went um, they went six and eight or seven and seven. So they really slipped up there, but they went nine and five and they got the fourth seed, uh, which was very, pretty much a shocker. But they ended up going to the Mega Bowl anyway, and they sh uh, shocked a lot of people because this looked like this was the season that teams like the Demons or the Bulldogs or even the Revolution would go up and, and play in the championship game or even win the championship. Uh, but it ended up that the Miami Cyclones just had a midseason slump, but they made it to the playoffs and ended up going back to back. Um, a lot of teams that were surprisingly bad were the Carolina Kings. They just didn't have a O-line. They didn't return a lot of guys from the O-line, and the defense was pretty abysmal. And there was a lot of drops with the raw receivers. Um, but hopefully in Season 6, uh, with the draft picks that they have now, they want to bring that back up. Um, they had their first tie in BFL history. They went 4-9-1, and, and the Dallas Marshals, who were abysmal this year, um, they went 3-10-1. And we've never had a team with double digit losses before in the BFL, but Dallas and Toronto did that. Speaking of Toronto, Toronto, uh, just uh, this is what you would think uh, an expansion team would do. Um, instead of going the Oakland Grizzlies route, winning a championship in season three in their first year, they went one in 13. Yeah, one in 13. They won one game and it wasn't even at home. They had, they still have a record at home of 0 and 6 and uh i believe 0 and 6 0 and 7 yeah 0 and 7 and they won their one game against the detroit demons in a away game and the demons did advance to the playoffs they lost in the first round to the miami cyclones which was a very much a shocker because a lot of teams a lot of people thought that the demons were gonna win uh and go on and advance into the playoffs they thought they were gonna have a deep playoff run but um, Miami advanced on to the championship game. They won the championship game against the Boston Revolution. This was uh, the first championship game that was away from Miami. Boston actually hosted it. They were the two seed. They went 10 and four. They had a great season. And uh, right on the back of uh, Corey Smith, like I said before, had an amazing season. And the Miami Cyclones won the game 28-19. That is also on the YouTube channel. Is my one of my first um, YouTube videos. We recorded week 15, and then we recorded all the way up to the championship game. So we recorded the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and the championship game. All of that is on the YouTube channel. I will be linking that on the uh, the top right corner as well. But Mega Bowl 5, it was a classic, but Miami just got the better of the young Boston Revolution squad. A lot of these guys were in their second year or in their third year. So these were a lot of young guys that came from the draft last season. But Miami, they have a legacy, Rex Johnson. He's basically the Tom Brady of this league. He won his fourth championship. He won his uh, second Mega Bowl back-to-back. -back. BB Cash won the play of the game. Um, he won the Mega Bowl MVP. He had eight receptions, 257 yards, 120 yards after the catch at two touchdowns. It was just a, a light up show for them. They won the game 28 19. Um, and they're ready to get a three peat here in the BFL. Uh, I'm very excited for season six. And this is going to be just. Uh, probably one of the biggest seasons I've ever done. We did not add an expansion team. We wanted to keep it at 15 teams for a 14 game season. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with that right now. Uh, maybe season seven will add uh, our final um, 16th team because in tournament mode, 
you only have 16 teams but this is an amazing league right now um the league is in good hands a lot of great guys coming up the new york jays just added a quarterback as you see we didn't talk a lot about the jays because they've never been to the playoffs in their five year existence uh being in a league so maybe they're ready to change that they got a new quarterback toronto got the number one pick uh, who was Tyrone Hastings, if you remember him from the uh, NFL Europe League. We did a draft on that. So this is going to be a very, very exciting season six. And I hope that this clarified a little bit for you about the league and all basically all 10 seasons of this league and what I've developed so far. And it is a passing project of mine. So I will be putting a little bit more effort into that other than what I did in the previous series like the USFL or the nfl europe so this is going to be big a lot of new uniforms uh like i said before i've designed each and every team i've even given them alternates i've given them uh alternate arenas i've given them all types of stuff so it just be on the lookout for all those brand new uniforms we just added them i just added the templates to the discord uh the ncaa 06 next discord so please uh, check that out i'll have that in the description as well and yeah i uh, hopefully you guys uh, stick around and watch all the games and uh hopefully i could get all of them out in a timely manner uh, in a timely manner uh but uh just enjoy the ride and uh i'll try to get these out uh as soon as i can i know i got a lot of work and stuff so um hopefully you uh stick with us and uh enjoy everything so um definitely a passion project of mine so um if you enjoy like the video and subscribe and uh we'll just keep this thing going and uh thank you guys for watching